Number 5. First, let's take a trip down memory lane. Back in the early 90s, game developers were like kids in a candy store, trying to figure out how to make 3D games without making everyone's head spin, literally. Enter Damocles Mercenary 2, a game that made open world gameplay feel as fresh and exciting as a new pair of socks on laundry day. This game was the granddaddy of GTA and Red Dead Redemption, minus the high definition graphics and celebrity voice actors of course. Now what's the scoop on Democles, Mercenary 2? Picture this, you're a mercenary, right? And not just any mercenary, a spacefaring, laser welding, futuristic freelancer who's got more moves than a breakdancing octopus. The game drops you in a vast open world where you can go almost anywhere your heart desires. You could tackle missions, explore sprawling landscapes, or just try to figure out how to get the darn spaceship from stop spinning around in circles. Ah, the joys of early 3D navigation. The plot thickens like gravy that's been left on the stove too long. When you find out that the galaxy is in chaos and it's up to you to sort out the mess, as you jet through various planetary systems you encounter a hodgepodge of characters and grapple with moral choices that could either save the galaxy or make it a lot more interesting. In true 90s fashion, the game features a lovingly clunky interface and a story that might make you scratch your head, but it's all part of the charm. The missions range from epic to did I just do that, and navigating the open world often feels like you're trying to solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. But hey, that's half the fun, ain't it? So let's give a standing ovation to Democles Mercenary 2, a game that laid the groundwork for the modern open world escapades we love today. It may not have the polish of GTA 5 or the epic scale of Red Dead Redemption 2, but it certainly deserves a place of honor in the annals of gaming history. If you ever feel nostalgic or you just want to experience what it's like to game back in the 3D world when it was daisy fresh, give this classic a spin. Just remember, don't take it too seriously, and after all, it's all part of the adventure. Number four. Ah, Lemmings for the Amiga. If you ever wondered what it's like to be in charge of a clumsy army of tiny creatures who seem to be on a quest to self-destruct, then this is the game for you. Imagine, if you will, a troop of Lemmings. Not your average, everyday Lemmings. Oh no, these little guys have decided they're going wild on a reckless adventure that they'll need your help to avoid turning themselves into a lemming pancake. They're like the most adorably clueless squad of soldiers you've ever seen, except they don't exactly follow orders in the traditional sense. It's less yes sir and a little bit more, wait, did, where's my parachute? In Lemmings, it's your job to guide these fuzzy foot-trotting disasters through a series of elaborate obstacle courses. Think of it as a test of your patience and problem-solving skills with a sprinkle of lemming mayhem. Your lemmings are determined to march forward, and if you don't step in, they'll do their best impression of a human cannonball, straight into pitfalls, spikes, and various other misadventures. You get to assign them jobs like digger, builder, or blocker. Sounds simple, right? Except these little critters can't multitask worth a darn. A lemming who's digging a tunnel might decide mid-dig that it's time to start dancing, and one who's building a bridge might just decide it's time to jump right off of it. It's a bit like herding a bunch of very enthusiastic, slightly deranged kittens towards safety if the kittens were fatalistic. The game's levels are like a series of increasingly elaborate Rube Goldberg machines, where the goal is to get 
every single lemming to the exit without losing too many to their own innate clumsiness. It's a true test of your strategic thinking, patience, and ability to resist the urge to yell at your screen. So why is Lemmings one of the top games for the Amiga? Because it's an absolute riot. Watching these adorable, hopeless, misguided creatures attempting to navigate their way to safety is like watching a comedy of errors in its pixelated form. It's a game where the biggest challenge is not letting your own frustration turn into a full-scale meltdown, especially when those little lemmings start marching straight towards a trap. If you're in the mood for a game that'll make you laugh, think, and perhaps question your own sanity while trying to save a bunch of charmingly hapless critters, Lemmings is your tickets to pure, unadulterated amusement. Just remember, if you ever feel like you're losing control, don't worry. So are the Lemmings. Number 3 desert, unchanged for millions of years, yet witness to a biblical prophecy come true that one day the meek shall inherit the earth. Let's take a trip back in time to an era where horror movies were as cheesy as a slice of pizza from a questionable diner. It Came from the Desert for the Amiga is like watching a 1950s monster movie on a roller coaster of pixelated terror and nostalgia. Picture this, giant ants, vintage hairstyles, and a town that looks like it's straight out of an episode of Leave it to Beaver, except with a lot more screaming and insecticide. So what's the deal with this delightful slice of retro fright? You, brave soul, are thrust into the middle of a desert town where the biggest problem seems to be a chronic lack of decent coffee. But wait, things take a turn for the alarming when some colossal ants decide that your quaint little town is the perfect spot for a picnic. And by picnic, we mean devour everything in sight. That kind of picnic. You play as a hero straight out of a B-movie script, complete with a stunningly square jaw and an unshakable sense of duty. Your job is to save the town from these six-legged horrors, and let me tell you, it's not going to be easy. The ants are not only enormous, but they also have a talent for showing up at the most inconvenient times. It's like they have an evil sense of humor and a vendetta against small towns and their questionable roadside attractions. The game's graphics are wonderfully reminiscent of those flickering, grainy films from the 1950s. If you've ever wondered what it would be like to experience one of these campy monster movies firsthand without the questionable special effects, It Came From The Desert is here to deliver. Think of it as a perfect fusion of pixelated charm and giant insect horror. But don't be fooled by its charming retro style. This game isn't about just swatting ants and running around like a headless chicken. There's a surprising amount of strategy involved. You'll need to gather supplies, track down ants, and even make friends with some of the town's quirky inhabitants, all while trying to avoid becoming an ant buffet. It's a thrilling race against time and a lot of creepy crawlers. In true B-movie style, the game's dialogue and scenarios are delightfully over the top. Expect cheesy one-liners, improbable plot twists, and enough bug-related puns to make you groan and laugh in questionable measure. The game even gives you the opportunity to try out various weapons, everything from a trusty old gun to a makeshift flamethrower. Because when you're fighting giant ants, subtlety is overrated. So why does It Came From The Desert rank so high on the list of best Amiga games? Because it's an absolute blast. It captures the essence of those glorious, goofy old horror films and wraps it all up in a package that equals parts thrilling and hilariously campy. If you've ever wanted to star in your very own 1950s monster movie, this game's your chance to shine, or at least to save a small town from a rather unusual apocalypse. So grab your bug spray, put on your best heroic pose, and get ready for some giant pixelated insect action. Number 2 
It's time to dive into Flashback for the Amiga, a game so stylish and cinematic it might just make you want to put on your best leather jacket and strike a dramatic pose in front of a mirror. Imagine a 90s action film where the hero is an amnesiac with a penchant for jumping from ledges and dodging lasers. You pretty much nailed the essence of Flashback. So what's all the buzz about? In Flashback, you play as Conrad B. Hart. A name so cool it sounds like it could be a secret agent code or a late night jazz singer. Conrad wakes up in a futuristic jungle with no memory of how he got there, which is a perfect setup for some serious adventure and an extensive amount of existential dread. It's like if your GPS suddenly decided to take you on a detour through a dystopian nightmare and you had to figure out how to get home while dodging robots and decoding cryptic messages. Let's talk visuals because oh boy. Flashback is like a visual feast served on a pixelated platter. The graphics are so slick that they practically deserve their own award. It isn't your typical 90s fare. It's more like a video game equivalent of a blockbuster movie. The animation is so smooth that Conrad's acrobatics look like they were choreographed by a team of highly caffeinated stunt doubles. While he's running, jumping, or getting into the occasional fistfight, you'll be impressed by how fluid everything moves. And let's not forget the cutscenes. If you thought your VHS collection had some epic moments, just wait until you see these. The cutscenes in Flashback are so cinematic they practically come with popcorn. They're packed with dramatic flair and tension that would make even the most stoic viewers clutch to their seat. Every time a cutscene kicks in, you half expect the audience to start clapping, if only they weren't busy trying to save Conrad from yet another perilous situation. The game's atmosphere is so engaging you might forget that you're playing a video game and not starring in your own personal sci-fi thriller. Conrad's quest takes him through beautifully designed environments, from neon lit cityscapes to eerie alien landscapes, all rendered with such detail that you might catch yourself admiring the scenery while your character is being chased by a particularly nasty cyborg. But here's the real kicker, flashback isn't about just looking good. It's got a solid plot with twists and turns that keep you guessing. As Conrad pieces together his fractured memory, you'll find yourself on the edge of your seat, eager to find out what happens next. The puzzles are challenging but fair, and the action sequences are so thrilling they might make you want to practice your own high-flying stunts. Please don't try that at home. So all in all, Flashback for the Amiga is a dazzling, action-packed roller coaster that manages to combine top-notch visuals with a gripping story. It's like a fantastic 90s movie that you control with enough charm and style to even make the most hardened gamers stop and appreciate its artistry. So grab your joystick and prepare for some heart-pounding adventure and get ready to flashback to a time when gaming was truly an art form. Number one. Ahoy, ye land lovers and pixelated pirates! Set sail for the secret of Monkey Island on the Amiga. A game so wonderfully wacky, it's like a treasure chest overflowing with adventure, humor, and the occasional slapstick mishap. If you've ever dreamed of becoming a swashbuckling pirate without the risk of scurvy and shipwrecks, this game is your golden ticket to a virtual sea of laughs and mystery. Let's dive into the plot of this nautical nonsense. You play as Guybrush Threepwood, a young lad with an insatiable thirst for adventure and an impressive lack of seafaring skills. Guybrush has only two goals in life, to become a mighty pirate and to discover the legendary secret of Monkey Island. It's a quest so grand and so absurd that even the most seasoned pirate might stop and say, wait, what now? Our hero's journey is anything but smooth sailing. Along the way, he encounters a colorful cast of characters, including the dreadfully humorous ghost pirate LeChuck, who has all the charm of a haunted potato and a penchant for evil schemes. There are more quirky characters in this game than you can shake a cutlass at, at each more memorable and hilarious eccentric moment than the last. The cutscenes in The Secret of Monkey Island are pure comic gold. Picture this. Animations that move smoother than a pirate's promise to never drink again after a wild night at sea. The dialogue is sharp and witty, brimming with puns and zingers that will have you snickering like a mischievous pirate who just found an extra piece of eight in their boot. 
The storytelling is so engaging that you'll find yourself laughing out loud while trying to navigate the treacherous swamps and tricky treasure hunts. Oh, and the puzzles. The puzzles are as deviously delightful as a hidden treasure map pinned by a prankster. From the infamous insult sword fighting, to solving riddles that could stump even the cleverest sea dog, these brain teasers are as satisfying as a secret stash of grog. You'll need to use your noggin to outwit the rival pirates, escape from sticky situations, and ultimately unlock the mysteries of Monkey Island. But it's not just about the laughs and the puzzles. The game's visuals, while charmingly retro, are bursting with personality. The vibrant, hand-drawn art style makes every scene pop with colorful whimsy, and the soundtrack is catchy enough to have you humming pirate shanties long after the game is over. In a nutshell, The Secret of Monkey Island is a masterclass in storytelling and humor. It's got everything you could want, a lovable hero, a villain with a flair for the dramatic, and enough clever dialogue and puzzles to keep you hooked from start to finish. So grab your tricorn hat, dust off your compass, and get ready for a treasure hunt like no other. The Secret of Monkey Island is just waiting to be discovered. If you can outwit a few pirates and survive the occasional cursed pirate ghost along the way, arr, it's a jolly good time. Game over, man. It's game over.